Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here and I'm back and we're going to talk today about our old friend Open Core Legacy Patcher. After not having a video out in the last month, and here's three videos in a row, three days in a row, after 26.1 and Tahoe sucks, <laughs> it's good to be back talking about our old friends, right? Because we haven't talked about Open Core Legacy Patcher in a little bit and we want to see where we're at. Uh, where's Tahoe? The current status, how are the machines working on Mac OS Sequoia 15.7.2 and 14.8.2. And that's why we have our Sequoia fleet out here and we got our Sonoma fleet, which is still a great running operating system. And I just got done looking through hundreds of your comments on that Tahoe video. And that was an interesting one because I, I felt really conflicted about that one. A lot of you said, hey, you are telling the story. You're telling it the way you're, you're being real. You're not just being one of the other videos that are just a bunch of fanboy all day long drinking the Kool-Aid. But a couple of you said, you know, maybe you should be more objective like you have been in the past. And that's what I try to do. I try to come out with a video and talk about different things, what I'm passionate about. But after reading hundreds of comments about your struggles with installing Tahoe and what it's done to your system, I just felt like I had to talk about it. I had to say it. I had to bring your voice out for others to see. It's not, and I hate that too, because when you when you bring out a negative view of something, it's easy to say, oh, that, that guy is just a complainer, or he's all this kind of stuff. And it's not that. It's just real feedback from you about it. And there was plenty of people in that video, in the comments saying, Tahoe's running great. And you know, on my production system, on my work machine, it is working great, but it's an M4, it's a brand new machine. And not everybody has a new machine and some of the older machines are struggling a little bit. But if your system upgraded and it's running Tahoe well, that's good and I wanna hear about it because it's not all doom and gloom. Some people updated their Tahoe and it's, it's running very well for them. And that's great. And that's part of the whole story too. But that's why I like to go back to these guys and still talk about our old friend, Open Core Legacy Patcher. Because this is near and dear to my heart. The fact that I'm sitting here holding a 2011 MacBook Pro and it's running Sonoma or Sequoia on here and it's running it very well is a testament to the software and the operating system itself. And we need to be able to talk about the positive too. And this software is a positive piece in this whole story. Let's now go into the current status of where it's at and the compatibility because I wanted to quickly talk about the Metalib support package and the kernel debug kit and the status of Mac OS Tahoe. Let's first talk about the Metalib support package and this is required for Ivy Bridge, Haswell, NVIDIA, Kepler based systems running Sequoia or newer. So if you're running Mac OS Sonoma you do not need the Metalib support package. So you will not see that download process or anything, only for Mac with Sequoia and newer. And you can see the current status of the Metalib support package is here on the GitHub page. And remember, this works and this package is created on the build server and creates that after a new release is out. But to build, the Metalib support package, it requires an IPSW and it takes the information from there and builds that package. Now, Apple stopped releasing IPSW files with the release of Mac OS Sequoia 15.6.1. So that's the final one. That's it. So if you're not seeing that on your Sequoia as a downloadable, that's because you already have it and you're fine and you're ready to go. Now that's the same thing with the kernel debug kit, the KDK. And if you see you're not getting the kernel debug kit anymore, that's the same thing. Apple stopped releasing kernel debug kits after 15.6, that's the final version. So if you've been installing these security updates like 15.1, 15.6.2 is what we're talking about today, you're not gonna see that downloading. So if you're looking for that and you're wondering why that's not downloading, this is the reason, because this is the final. Now, what does that mean though for future releases since we're getting farther away from the original kernel debug kit and the metal of support package? Hopefully nothing, because Apple is only really doing security fixes, not 
base OS drivers. I mean, at least we hope. There could be a vulnerability in one of those pieces and it could cause problems, but we're gonna have to get to that when it comes. But for now, at least from what we've been able to see with the security updates and the current version of the patcher and the older versions of the kernel debug kit and the metal of support package, we're doing okay, which is great news. Well, what about Mac OS Tahoe and Open Core Legacy Patcher? I hope I didn't, with the last video, temper some of the excitement. I'm still excited about Tahoe. I run Tahoe, like I said, on multiple machines. And it's going to be fixed. It already is being fixed a lot with 26.1. And just because I had a rough launch does not mean that it's going to be a great OS, just like Big Sur. Big Sur was fixed. It was a mess and it was fixed. Tahoe will be fixed. And the developers are doing all that work within Apple right now, taking that feedback and doing it right now. So when Open Core Legacy Patcher is ready for Tahoe, I'm also hoping that that time was used to get it in a good position too. Imagine trying to install what we just talked about yesterday on these older devices. If it's having trouble on Apple Silicon, imagine what these older guys would have to go through. It would be a rough time. So by the time Open Core Legacy Patcher is ready, I'm hoping so will Tahoe. So it could be a really good match at that time. But the development is still ongoing and the estimate is still within late this year, early next year. You know, December, January, February. There still hasn't been any kind of update with that. So that's still where we're looking at with 3.0.0. So we'll just have to keep an eye to see if there's any more developments. Um, and when there is, you know I'll bring it right to you. So that's the current status with Mac OS Tahoe and Open Core Legacy Patcher. As I was editing this video, I forgot and I wanted to mention this really important part. And you may have already heard me talk about this again, but I need to make sure that if you didn't, you got to hear this. This is what the software update will look like. And you might get notifications up here saying, hey, uh, it's time to install an update to Mac OS Tahoe. And you're thinking, wow, that looks great. Again, don't do that and make sure that you go into software update, you go into automatic updates here like this, and make sure all these three options are off. Because if you don't, it'll download in the background and install and you're gonna have a lot of problems. So make sure that is step one. Step two is, is that, look how Apple makes this look. They're trying to pull a fast one on you. You know, you click on here and upgrade, now you're going to Tahoe accidentally. There's multiple people that have accidentally gone, either it's been automatic updates or clicked on this or clicked on another box like up here to get rid of something and it's updating. And then the other problem is, is this how Apple made this really crappy too on purpose. See this update now? Well, first of all, if you don't know, you can click on this little thing that doesn't even look like a button, but you can. So when you click on it, you go in here, oh, wait a minute, look what's automatically selected for me. Mac OS Tahoe 26.1 and Safari 26.1. Great, let's update. No, you have to go in here, you have to unselect if you don't want to go to 26.1 Safari, and then you gotta unclick Tahoe 26.1, select Sequoia and check mark the box and update that way. So I don't want you to get caught up accidentally trying to do that, right? So I needed to make sure that you were aware of those kind of pitfalls in here and people have already fallen down those accidentally, didn't mean to. If you click update now, it will update to Sequoia here, but look at, and one more, it'll also force Safari 26.1 on you. And there's been plenty of reports on Safari 26 not running well at all. That's why you have to go in here and unselect that to go in there. So wanna make sure you're aware. So now let's talk about how it's running on these systems and they're running great, no issues. We've got our 2017 over here, everything's working. Touch Bar, Touch ID, the system is running wonderful on one of the fastest devices that is able to run uh, Open Core Legacy Patcher. But that's why I bring these older systems in like this 2011 non-metal 17 inch, running great on Sonoma. Uh, this 2014 11 inch, running Sonoma and Sequoia, running great, running really well. And so is our Sequoia Glossy 2011 MacBook Pro on Sequoia, running great too. And we even have our Mac Pro 2010. This guy hasn't been powered on in a while. Look, you can see. 
2.4.1 needs to be installed and it's got 2.4.0 on there. This guy's still running great and I think we're running, let's take a guess, I'm going to say we're running, actually I don't even know. Let's take a guess, what do you think this guy's running? When was the last time we had this thing on? Let's see, move this guy to the side here. SW Verge. I'm going to say hmm, 15.50. Oh, 15.6. Okay, it wasn't that far back. So this guy has got two security updates to install. We'll get this installed and working, but I, I'm kind of at a, I kind of would like to hear your feedback because I, I look through some of the, the comments and the areas where there was interest in the Open Core Legacy Patcher videos. And one of the things that struck me is you voting with either skipping over or dropping out of the video was the walkthrough on how to update. And I only put that in there because there's still a lot of people that, have, that are asking the same question. How do I update? Should I update to the latest version of Open Core Legacy Patcher? Should I update with a USB installer? Uh, is it safe to use system preferences? I think what it is is that there's a lot of veteran viewers who've installed this multiple times and you don't really need to see that. So I go back and forth. I want to put out there what you're interested in seeing. And I don't want to waste your time. Time is very valuable. And I want to give you the information that you want. So if I'm skipping or glossing over something with getting these machines running and you want to see some other information, let me know. But I think we'll skip over this for, for now because we've already had a longer video talking about a couple different things. But let me know in the comments. How are you feeling with Open Core Legacy Patcher? Is your systems running well like these guys are? I'm still really impressed. I've been thinking about trying to do a fun challenge or something, like maybe putting, away, putting out to the side one of my production machines that I use to do video editing and all that and try to run off one of these guys for a week just to see how it works. And I'm blessed to even have a newer device. And I'm blessed to have all these machines to be able to show you and test for you. Some people aren't. Some people, their 2009 MacBook Pro is the only device they have. And that's why I had a that big conversation about the operating system and being able to use it for you. Not everybody has the luxury of having a newer machine or being able to have the technical abilities to downgrade to a previous operating system and, and wipe and reload all your data and get all your stuff all set up again. Let me know how you feel about that. What do you want to see? What are the things that you want me to cover in these videos? Because I want to make sure I bring you the latest information, the most up-to-date information that impacts you. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.